Hi guys, Brett here from Hearns Hobbies and today we're going to have a look at doing the service and rebuild on this X-Max center diff unit. Now you'd noticed in my other video there that we actually disassembled it and it was really really grubby the gearbox. So I've done nothing more than just disassemble it and clean the casing and the gear set so we can get in there now and rebuild the center diff unit without introducing any dirt or muck into the drivetrain. So yeah, you did see that it was quite dirty. So all I have to do now is lift this lot out, get the center diff out, and we can put it to the side. Because this is the center differential unit here that we're going to be rebuilding and re-lubing. So this is an oil-filled drive unit. Um, and the Traxxas recommend and they use 20 million grade, according to them. Um, now that's something that I don't use in competition use, but I am gonna go and put two million in it. Now, a lot of people actually go heavier and they put earplugs and stuff in them, I've seen, um, but that leads to terminal, generally terminal um, driveline failure because it's just too much shock loading through the transmission. So by hopefully going lower in the weight, I'm gonna introduce more front wheel drive, get better steering and some better handling out of the rig itself. But it's a tuning option. If I'm not happy with it, I can just pull it out and re-oil it. All right, so let me get this apart and get it disassembled. So I'm going to start by getting my nine steps, uh, two and a half mil driver and removing the main gear from the center diff unit. Now for a ready to run car, I, I just can't commend Traxxas enough. That's a nice cast alloy unit and it's really important because these actually get really hot. So the plastic cases, they can tend to melt and the problem with plastic is when it melts or when it softens, it can distort and you can indeed lose your gear mesh and have damaged gear mesh inside the diff causing it to fail. Um, I've never actually done one of these center diffs before. So let's do this together. I've got a few simple tools on hand ready to deploy. Got some shell light, which I'm gonna to use to clean the, the silicon oils got a nine steps bearing kick so I'm going to re-race the transmission on, on assembly. Oh, and you can see here it has just had a bit of stiction and come across and the oil itself is in fact like I like I was assuming being 20 million grade much like a putty like a plastic putty. Now we can I'll zoom in here in the overhead And you can see, in fact, how, and you can see the color of it. I'm tipping it wasn't black when it went in there. So I'm gonna take it apart very carefully. I'm gonna try and maintain this gasket and reuse it the best that I can. So come out a little bit. I'm gonna be very careful here removing this gasket because I do want to utilize it and reuse it if possible. Um, so some things just need to be done. There's no other way, it's gonna take your time. I'm just sliding my flathead screwdriver underneath, pulling it off very gently, being careful not to tear it. There we go, came off in one piece. And I can start to get the gear set out. Here we go, top cross pin. It's gonna come out. Lower cross pin and in the case itself, we have what looks to be 20 million lubricant. Now I'm gonna put two million in, and I thought that was thick, but it's definitely not quite as thick and chunky as this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape off the excess lubricant. I've got a little plastic safe jar here. Now I am using a product called Shell Light. Um, so this is highly flammable. So be very careful, definitely. Don't go using any open flames or anything around it. Use it in a well-ventilated space. Go ahead and drop each part in there as I've scraped off the excess. Like so. These beautiful little gear shoes here to hold everything together. It's getting the excess grease off. If you can call it that, it really is a lot like a plastic putty consistency. Now 
and this will also clean any dirt and debris because I imagine that these gears have had quite some punishment in the use that it's had. Like so. Go here and try and get the, the bevel gears off. Hopefully it should just lift off. Like I said, I've not done this before, so I'm just going about things very carefully. Definitely don't want to be getting in at any hammers and chisels. It is all very precise gear, being very observant on any shims, gaskets and bearings. Like so, taking note if any of the gears are different from one another. Got a rubber seal here. We'll maintain that. I'll keep that out of the shell light. Should have another seal in here, I hope. Get that out carefully. There we have. That is a stripped gear. So now it's just a matter of cleaning up all the parts in our work surface, ready for assembly. Just got a, one of my favorite old rags here. My old toothbrush. All right, it could be BJ's toothbrush, just don't tell him I'm using it. Okay. If your hands are sensitive, of course, um, you know, you might want to use gloves for this, but I find it not too bad. Just could light rub over. A good scrub. I think this will get sped up, won't it, Beige? Sometimes there's no rushing these fun jobs. It's just a matter of going through the paces and getting it done. There's nothing glamorous about cleaning the inside of a diff case out. Get another rag, give it a wipe over. The good thing about the shell light 
solvent that I'm using is that it does evaporate really quickly so it doesn't leave behind any oily residue and you can see in fact if you've cleaned your part properly or not that one can have a final rinse at the end these parts here I'm going to agitate in the jar Already I'm re regretting not wearing gloves. <laughs> Giving it a little wipe over with a bit of a cleaner rag. Look at that finish. Absolutely beautiful. Really happy with the way that this is coming up. Like I said, a little bit of elbow grease, nothing too glamorous. But there's a lot of pride to be had in doing a beautiful rebuild. And I find by actually cleaning the parts to such a good state, you can actually see and monitor the wear and tear on the individual components so say for example if i noticed that there was excessive wear on the on the gears or they were starting to polish up i could in fact put them on my shopping list for next time knowing that next time that i service this car those parts are going to need to be replaced instead of waiting until it breaks and in fact doing more damage to other components that don't necessarily need to be damaged. Give this a wipe over. Really, really happy with how that's coming up so far. A few of the smaller components coming out now. Okay, a little bit of a wipe over again. We're looking really, really good. I cannot believe the years of use that this rig has had and the quality of the parts that Traxxas use to maintain that it's actually quite durable. Okay, we're coming down to our final components. A 
And what I like to do now is actually give them a final rinse over in a clean tub. You can see the dirt and muck that we've got left behind, which is a really good thing. I'll be right back with a fresh tub of shell light. Okay, got our fresh shell light going in. This is going to act like a rinse, I suppose. A final rinse for the parts. Throw them all in again. There we go, I just agitate it around with the screwdriver. Get any of the last debris off. Okay. Getting any last remaining really, really stubborn pieces done. Okay. Last little components coming out into my mat. Okay, the tub is empty. Okay. Last thing I'll do is I'll clean off my workspace. Okay, done with this shell light and solvent for the moment. Give my hands a quick wipe over. Okay, now we can get towards the reassembly. So, good other components here, you can see all nice, beautifully clean and dry. We've effectively just got to put it together in the same way which it came apart. So the last things to come out were the, the rubber O-rings. Now I didn't put those, you'll notice, in any of the chemicals because I didn't want to risk any chance of chemical reaction deforming or eating away these O-ring seals. Because these are critical in keeping the fluid into the diff. So this is just with a nice dry rag getting off any surface debris and the gunk and grime to improve the um, building a perfectly clean differential and the gasket especially need to be really quite careful with that because i don't want that to tear or lose its shape very light rub over but we need it to be clean to make sure that it does in fact create a beautiful seal and i'm really happy the fact that we can reuse all of our parts okay so i'm going to start by putting the, the silicon o-rings into the case 
like so, making sure it's all sitting nice into the big ring gear, like so. Then I'm actually going to use a rubber grease. Now I've got an XTR product here, and this is actually going to protect, because these are a silicon seal, um, and using a silicon based oil, they will over time um, affect each other and try and become one. So the silicon will actually penetrate the O-ring. So um, this grease here will actually act as a sealant to save the diff oil affecting the, the O-ring seal. Don't have to absolutely lather it like so. Beautiful. And then on the back of it here, where the diff out drive comes through, I'm actually going to use a different grease again. I'm going to use a lithium grease and it's really good to create a nice lubricated seal across the face of the diff. Then I could go ahead and slide my first gear into the housing. Being sure not to disturb the o-ring or pinch it like so and again if you have to use heavy-handed tools for this sort of thing chances are it's not going together properly so we can give it a little spin it's spinning really nice it's gone together with a light push of the finger and I can wipe off all the excess we've got the greases that have come through there to maintain that we've got a nice clean build. It's turning nice and free so it tells me that the o-ring is not pinched. I didn't have to hammer it through so I'm really happy with the first part of the, the diff case. I can go ahead now and do the same exactly the same thing with the second on the bevel gear. Now I don't have to put bearings on now. On most other cars you would put bearings on the cases first before the out drives go but Traxxas have designed it in a way that they can go on last which is a nice touch. Go ahead now push this one in again shouldn't need anything more than finger pressure light rotation and it goes in like so. There we go wipe off the excess and the reason I'm doing such a good job on this diff is because I know how much abuse and punishment it's going to take. Then I can go ahead. Okay, so like I said, I've actually got my two million weight oil here, two million CST oil, and it's quite tricky to deal with. So when I'm working with really heavy oils, I like to put it in a little piece at a time because you're effectively packing the, the diff unit. So just putting it in the first lot. It's a bit of a messy thing. And if I can give but one word of warning, it's to make sure that none of your diff um, greases or fluids go into these four screw holes because they will create a hydraulic lock and you will find it impossible to do the screw up um, and cause you to thread your unit, strip the threads in it. Here we go. Put my bevel gear on the lower cross pin. Put my bevel washer on and I can slide that one straight in, <coughs> keeping it all nice and lined up. Making sure the shoe's going in the right way. Like I said, it's a little bit tricky with these heavyweight diff fluids. There we go. Get that one in there nicely and seated. Get my gear in there. Making sure the cross pin's pushed all the way down. Just doing that with a screw. Everything's nice. With a screwdriver, everything's nice and seated. Haven't had to hit anything. Make sure the cross pin is facing up because the, the top one will have to come down into it to ensure we've got a nice gear mesh. 
at this point here I'll put an out drive in and I've got this one here it doesn't matter which one goes in and I'll give the diff itself a little spin just to make sure that the gears are nice and smooth which they are they're turning the pins not jumping out my fingers not jumping up and down so I have got a good mesh it's nice and located now I'll go ahead and I'll put some more fluid in the diff and do another layer of gears like so you can see how tricky this is to work with now it's important not to overfill the differential but it's also impossible to really register how much fluid's going in there because it's so thick it doesn't actually flow under its own weight very easily I'll go ahead and I will put the gears on the top cross pin I don't expect this one to go in quite so easily but let's see it is a very well engineered diff so start by sliding these down now given the fact this is going to get surprisingly I mean well, unsurprising it's going to get actually quite hot and the fluid will actually lighten up and start to flow at room temperature state it's very very thick What makes it hard is that you can't really see or feel a lot of what's going on down below. Oh, that just clicked in, which was really nice sound. We've got the shoes all the way in. The gears are pushed all the way back. And again, I'm going to put the out drive in and see if I can rotate it which I definitely can so everything's nice and meshed all my cross pins are sitting really really nice I'm really happy with that assembly um, the oil level shouldn't be too bad it's about flush now I know it wouldn't have got all the way down to the bottom yet but I'm gonna go ahead and put the gasket on and assemble the top now with this gasket here again I'm going to use a bit of my my rubber grease just to put a light film on the gasket itself nothing too much just to make sure that I can get it in to sit really nicely just rubbing it off getting that located on the dowels like so And we've got a beautiful nice and clean gasket surface there clean gasket a little bit of lubrication on the gasket the rest of the diff there's no reason that it shouldn't go together just as easy so I have to locate these little pinholes here in with the dowels on the top of the diff so let's see how we go about doing that with such a heavy fluid it shouldn't like run out which is a nice place to be might however take a little bit of lining up of the gears and the mesh to get it all seated nice all seated nice and I think we've actually got it then I'm just going to put the out drive in and rotate it ever so slightly just to ensure and it is that is a great gear mesh okay I'm really really happy with that I'm gonna get rid of any excess fluid that's come up through the holes like so and 
you can basically just scrape this one off like putty it's not really like oil still really really thick this stuff like I said that's why you want to make sure you don't get it into your thread holes because if you get that in your thread it will be real painful to uh, get out and try and do your screws up to the correct torque okay now the next thing I'm going to do before I Loctite these screws in because I did notice that there was factory Loctite on them is I'm going to put them in without Loctite and make sure that everything's assembled nice and nice and smoothly rotating and meshing correctly before I go ahead and put Loctite in put these four screws in just seating it definitely going to be doing these ones up nice and even I'll get this one seated because it's exactly opposite the first one I did up my last screw here and that's as bad as painful as it should be it shouldn't be anything misaligned shouldn't be anything that you need really heavy-handed tools for just being very careful when I'm doing it up do them up all evenly now they have seated so I'm going to go ahead now put my out drive in and just spin the diff over now it is going to be tight because of the this vis the viscosity or the thickness or the weight of the oil but does feel very nice and smooth for such a big unit spin it from the other side really really happy with that okay I'll go ahead and tighten this unit up like so I can get this dirty rag out of the way okay so it's hurting my hand a bit so let's turn it over looks to me like it might have locked up which is not what we wanted to see so I'm glad that we did it up nice and smooth now that can be because there's too much fluid in there can be because of misalignment just undo it half a turn And we'll go back and give it another rotation beautiful there beautiful over here hopefully it's just a big clump of the oil I can hear air coming out of the diff which is good the, the oil's pushing it out go ahead final yep it's gone tight again so I'm saying that it's definitely got too much oil in it so all we can do loosen it off half a turn and re-bleed again a bit of a trap hole of working with such heavy fluids is it is quite hard to get in there that will be easing out any excess you can see it coming out the back here if we get in really close there's a little bit of oil that's escaping through the case which is exactly what we want to see here come out a bit worst case scenario is if we actually have to that's it look at that perfect now it is tight but you'd expect that from two million defoil so what we can do now is go ahead and lock tight it into position so we just had a little bit of excess lubricant in there 
but we've bled it out. I'll just do it one more time. So loosen the screws. And it probably wasn't the fact that it had too much lubricant in there, it was the fact that the air was trapped in there. Ideally, it would be good to actually assemble it, put the oil in and leave it overnight or a long time before you assemble it because it will flow down. Here we go. Double check that. More air I can hear coming out. Really good. Fantastic. Okay, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is lock tight it to ensure that it can't come loose in the future. Because these do these diff units do get really hot. So with the all the vibration, the heat, and the expansion and contraction can cause your screws to shake themselves loose. So I just got a bit of medium. Loctite here, doesn't need to be permanent stuff, just the blue stuff. A little bit on the screw head like so. And put that screw into the diff case. And do that to all four. Just needs to be a little bit of Loctite. You don't need to fill the hole with Loctite or anything like that. I've seen some people do some crazy stuff with Loctite. Just needs to go in a couple of threads. A creates a seal and B, just like a locking glue. Save it vibrating loose. Because the last thing you'd want after all this work, new bearings, clean gearbox case, is to take it out and after, won't happen first run, but after three or four runs, you notice a little bit of a noise and the next minute the whole truck locks up or blow your whole gearbox up. And it's just because the screws have come loose. Just checking in the cross pattern. No need to do them crazy tight. Beautiful. Give that a final check over. Beautiful, nice, smooth action there. It's, it's heavy, but it's that's exactly what I expected. Lovely. All right. So that's the rebuilding of the center diff unit. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Don't be scared to try it. Like I said, there's plenty of different thickness oils out of there. It does come with a 20 million. And most people go to a heavier oil in it to try and lock it up a bit. Um, but I'm actually trying to get a bit more front drive out of this truck. So I've gone down in oil. I've gone to a 2 million. It's going to make it a lot more twitchy to drive. But hopefully a lot more fun. So let's see what happens. And I can always change it again. I'm Brett from Hearns. And thanks for watching me rebuild the center diff on a Traxxas X-Max.